What's up guys? It is a super exciting time of year right now for us deer hunters. That opening day of bow season is getting closer and closer and the excitement level is definitely at an all-time high. We've been out on the farms getting a ton of projects done. We've been getting tree stands hung, shooting lanes trimmed, mock scrapes out, trail cameras with mineral sites, as well as here in that last two weeks. It's that last week of July and that first week of August we've been out trying to get fall plots in the ground. And this past weekend I was able to get two of my fall plots in the ground. So this video is going to be me kind of breaking down the process behind each plot. I took a different approach to planting each plot. But the good thing is both plots are very similar in size. They're both around a quarter acre and they both were previously planted in clover as well. Okay, so plot number one is on a farm I call the home farm and it's just over a quarter of an acre. And it's a real green bottom that sets down below two steep thick oak ridges as well as it has a deep creek that runs along the east side of the plot. In late February, I went into this plot and I dissed it up and I frost seeded clover and chicory as well as spread around four to 500 pounds of ag lime and four to 500 pounds of triple 10 fertilizer and the plot came up great. We had a ton of good lush clover and chicory come up. The turkeys fell in love with it and I was able to um, tag out on a great West Virginia long beard on the opening day of season. So again, the plot came up great, but throughout the summertime, just getting busy with other farm projects and, and other things going on in life, I kind of neglected the plot and we had a lot of unwanted grasses and unwanted broadleaf come up, which I was fine with because the plan all along was to come in with some kind of fall food plot blend. And um, here in West Virginia, there's a ton of browse in the woods for deer, so they're not really keying in on green food plot sources. So we kept it mowed off and we still had a good stand of clover. So two weeks ago, I was able to get out on a plot, get it dissed up, and I hit it with a pretty heavy concentration of Killzall, which is a weed and grass herbicide. And I got a great kill on the plot and it was looking good. And then we got a week long stretch of rain every single day. So I wasn't able to get out and get seed in the ground. And then last Sunday, we got about a five to six hour window where the rain was gonna hold off. So I went out on a plot, dissed it a second time, and uh, hit it with the drag to break up all those dirt clumps and get a nice smooth um, clean slate of, of good fresh dirt and I planted a turnip and radish mix and then I hit it with another heavy concentrate of the plot start by deer grow which is an awesome product it's a liquid lime and it's kind of a lime alternative and the good thing is about this plot where I hit it with the ag lime in February it takes about anywhere from five to eight months for a good ag lime to break down and actually be absorbed by the soil. So that process should be taking place as well, as long as this fast acting lime alternative from deer grow. So again, we, we drug it, dissed it up and got it planted before the rain and it's looking good. I went out there yesterday to actually freshen up some mock scrapes and put some cameras and corn out and the plot is already coming up and I can already see some turnips and radish starting to sprout. Okay, so plot number two is on a farm that I gained permission on about a month before turkey season, and I love the way this farm lays out. You got a bunch of hardwood ridge tops as well as some real steep, thick hollows as well. 
and just talking with the landowner and talking with the neighbors. There's not a ton of hunting that goes on in the general neighborhood, as well as there's some cattle farms that surround the property. So I knew I wanted to get some food on this property in some form or fashion. And there was a good looking half acre um, hardwood ridge top that I knew I could get in there and get food on the ground. So the original plan was to take that half acre and break it in half and do a quarter acre of that plot in clover and chicory and do the other quarter acre in the turnips and the radish and winter oats and winter peas mixture. So we went in, I dissed the first quarter acre about two months ago, sprayed it off, had it looking real nice, and we had clover and chicory coming up. It was looking great. And then I was gonna wait here in the next two weeks and plant the fall blend on the other quarter acre. But just with weather, and conflicting schedules between me and the landowner we weren't able to get that other half cleaned up um, in early spring he had guys come in and clean up some of the pine trees that were in there and they left big stacks of logs right in the middle of where the plot was going to be and like i said with us just getting so much rain it was hard to get the tractor in there and get that cleaned up so the plan switched instead of doing the whole half acre this year I'm going to take the quarter acre that was clover and chicory and replant that with the fall mix. So as I was saying about two months ago, I went in, brush hogged that quarter acre, sprayed it off. It was looking really good. And we did the clover and chicory mix and we had a great stand of clover coming up. So as I was saying about two months ago, I went in and I brush hogged that quarter acre and I sprayed it with the herbicide and got a really good kill and planted it with the clover and chicory as well as I spread around 300 pounds of ag lime. And the clover and chicory was coming up looking really nice. The only issue with that is being a hidey hole plot surrounded by hardwoods. We had a lot of unwanted grasses and unwanted broadleaf coming up with that being a first year plot. So before the plant had switched, I went in and sprayed it with a clethodome mix, which won't damage the clover. It'll only attack the unwanted grasses. And we had a pretty good kill. And as I was saying, the clover was looking good. But the only issue with clover going into it being your only you know, source of food on a farm is that first frost, the clover kind of goes dormant. So I knew I wanted some form of fall blend on this farm. So again, with the plant change and the not being able to plant the other quarter acre, I went in and with, instead of disking the plot, I overseeded it with the turnips and radish. So, so that's kind of the difference between the two plots is I dissed the one up to get a really good seed to soil contact. This one, I'm not disking it up. I just overseeded it right into the clover and right into the other broadleafs that were in there. Went ahead and sprayed it with the kills all as well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how each plot grows. As I was saying, I was out on the home farm and we already had some turnips and radish sprouting. I haven't got out to the other farm to see what it's looking like, but I'm sure we're going to start getting some sprouts coming here in the next couple days. we got some rain in the forecast. So again, I'm really excited just to watch and compare and contrast each plot to see which planting method was best. I also failed to mention that I did hit that clover plot on farm number two with plot start as well as I hit it with a round of plot boost when I sprayed the clethodome. So both of them have a lot of good lime potential and, and a lot of good fertilizer in the soil. So now it's just up to mother nature to get us the right amount of rain and hopefully, you know, the brassicas don't see too much browse pressure. And with that being said on both plots, we did the turnips and radish mix, which would have been done in the first week of August. In the last week of August to that first week of September time range, I'm going to go in and instead, of, without disking it, I'm going to overseed it with winter peas, winter oats, and winter rye. So what that's going to do is it's going to be that layering system. So when the brassicas are slowly picked out by the deer, we're going to have green food going in hopefully throughout the whole winter. And we're going to have two really good quarter acre food plots of nice green food going in all the way into the late season. So again, I'm super excited about just sitting back and watching how these plots grow and, and how the deer are going to hopefully fall in love with it. We've got mock scrapes set up on both plots. We've got cameras. We're going to have a tree stand in one. We just put an eight foot tower blind in the plot on the home farm. So hopefully, like I said, we get some good food plots going in and we're able to find some success over top of them and hopefully knock down a couple mature bucks. So with that being said, um, I'm definitely not a food plot expert. This is my first year really getting into the science behind food plots and what to plant and when to plant it and really how to plant it. And that's why I'm excited about doing the two different methods to compare and contrast for myself to know what might be the best option going forward. So if you guys have any questions about food plots or anything like that, 
feel free to leave down in the comments. Hit us up on social media. Also, just go on YouTube and look up any questions you have. There's millions of videos on food plots from no-till to to disking up and tilling food plots to spraying and, and planting a whole bunch of different mixtures and seeds. So, like I said, just do your research, do what you have the equipment to do, and continue to hunt 365. Thank you guys for watching.